Let's talk about Leica S9i stereo microscope with built-in camera. Before I get started, I want to tell you that this video is not sponsored by anyone and I'm not getting paid for doing this review. So I will be honest and I will tell you what features are great and what are some not so great things about this microscope. Let's jump in. While I'm unpacking the microscope, let me tell you what I used to have before I bought this microscope and why I bought this one. For the last three plus years, I've been using Leica A60 microscope. Like everyone else will tell you, it's a great microscope. I've done some fantastic work using it and I still have A60 microscope. I'm not sure what I will do with it, but I'm just keeping it for now. Most of my work is metal engraving. Here are some samples of my work. So the big question is, why did I buy this microscope, which is twice as expensive as A60 model? Well, simply, there is only one major reason why I bought it. And it's for video recording my work. I got tired of setting up multiple cameras for close-up shots. Video recording is very, very time-consuming and often I want to have multiple shots of the work I do. I know, this S9i microscope has terrific focusing and viewing capabilities and other features, but so does A60 model. Had A60 model had video recording capability, I would have probably stuck with that microscope. There is no need to talk much about packaging of the microscope. Everything is obviously packaged professionally. There was no damage to the items whatsoever. The basic items that come with the microscope are power adapter, USB cord, HDMI cable, remote control, and the documentation on CD or DVD ROMs. To get started, you will need to get a compatible mounting arm to hold the microscope. I had my A60 Leica mounted on GRS Acrobat Versa stand. I was able to reuse the stand. I did have to buy an additional mounting bracket for the new microscope to fit the GRS Acrobat Versa stand. It mounted perfectly. I have no complaints about it. As an option, you may purchase adjustable eyepieces, objective lens, and you need to purchase objective lens adapter for Leica if you're planning to use an objective lens. You will also need a ring light. Since I was migrating from Leica A60, I was able to reuse objective lens, objective lens adapter, and Optia LED ring light. Most lens accessories are compatible between Leica A60 and Leica S9i series. Before you settle on objective lenses and lens adapter, I encourage you to shop around. You may find much better deals. Installation was very simple. First, I removed LED ring light unscrewed A60 Leica, removed the pin adapter, then I installed the adapter to hold the microscope, and that's it. Then I adjusted the height, the focusing, the level of GRS Versa stand, and I was ready to go. Well, I think it's time to do some complaining. When you spend so much on this type of equipment and then you find out that the microscope doesn't come with SD memory card and it supports a maximum of 32 gigabyte SD card or that you cannot turn off the microscope unless you unplug the USB power cable. That's right, your power switch to microscope is unplugging and plug in the USB cable. Then you gotta wonder what the engineering group was thinking. 
or drinking at that time. Well, so remember to get yourself a 32 gigabytes or smaller SD memory card and a USB switch cord. And in the video, you will see it. I got it on internet and you can find one similar. Okay, let's go ahead and turn on the microscope and see how long it takes to boot up. It does take quite a long time to boot up. It takes about 30 seconds for a full boot up. I had an HDMI connected directly to LCD monitor. Let's go through all the menu options that this microscope provides. We will use the existing remote control to browse through all the menus. I will not talk about all the options the menu provides. Uh, just go ahead and watch the screen and I will browse through all the options that they have. They have pretty basic setup. Color adjustments, exposure, resolution, screen resolution, capturing resolution, network stream setup and resolution, uh, camera setup, user setup and ethernet setup. Let's talk a little bit about the screen resolution. At first, I thought what you see is what you get as far as video recording and pictures are concerned. I quickly found out that that's not the case. When you look through eyepiece viewfinder and compare it to what you see on the LCD monitor, the size of the image is different. To clarify further, the coverage of the area through the viewfinder is larger than what is displayed on the LCD monitor. I find myself often readjusting my workpiece in order to get it fit in the LCD monitor because that's what's being recorded on the SD memory card. I've learned that what's being recorded is not the same size of area you see through viewfinder eyepieces, but what's shown on the LCD monitor. Another thing that really bothered me was that the sound is not recorded by like a microscope. If you want any sound to be recorded, you either have to record on external a sound recorder or another video camera and then sync it up in your post editing software. As you can see it here I'm engraving but obviously there is no sound. The adjustable eyepieces when installed are somewhat easily moved when you adjust for your eyesight and I didn't like that. So what I used was one layer of electrical tape and that was enough to keep the eyepieces firm in one place when you are adjusting the focus. The magnification on this microscope is excellent. It's absolutely more than enough for the work that I do, which is engraving. In the product description, it is stated that this microscope has much improved fusion optics for more depth of field and a field of view more than a 60 microscope. It has 50 times max magnification with 10 times magnification eyepieces and no objective lens. 
it has increased zoom range 9 to 1 ratio. Opachromatic lenses deliver premium clarity and color. You also have an option for exchangeable eyepieces for even greater magnification. I'm not a gemologist or jeweler, but I was told that this microscope is excellent for working with precious stones. Let's take another look at the magnification level. Here you can see a tip of a carbon pen scriber next to a 120 degree graver. And now let's zoom in. As you can see, the zoom power is very significant for this kind of work. It's nearly impossible to do engraving under full magnification. But it's nice to have this feature in case you need to examine some work. Here is another magnification example of my work. Here is a fisherman and let's zoom in on him as much as we can. As you can see, under such magnification, any minor touch to a workpiece causes significant shaking and it's nearly impossible to be super steady under these levels. Well, I think at this time you have a broad feel of this microscope. It would take a lot of time to go through every single feature and capability, but in a good nutshell, I have shown you how you can use this microscope and the features it offers. Before I conclude this video though, I want to mention two more things. First, if you want to take pictures or record a video using this microscope, you need to use the remote control. There is a button for taking a picture on the actual microscope, but any touch of the microscope causes significant shaking when your workpiece is magnified. Second item. The video format that the microscope creates is not compatible with some video editing software. So, what I do is I convert the video using a software called Handbrake and the converted video is then compatible with the editing software. Alright, in my conclusion, I want to say that this is a great piece of equipment and I'm glad I got it. Please subscribe and click on the bell notification for my future videos. I will see you next time.